testifying at the inquest into Neil Agat's death. Now, uh, moving to issues in North uh, Africa, Morocco's parliament has uh, passed measures that extend the country's legal authority to include maritime space of Western Sahara, with the country's Minister of Foreign Affairs saying that this update would provide an accurate definition of maritime areas under the sovereignty of the Kingdom of Morocco. Well, this move, though, does add some further tension between the country and Western Sahara, the territory that's been disputed since Spain withdrew from the region in 1975. Morocco rejoined the African Union in 2017 after a 33-year absence. Well, to tell us a little bit more about some of these issues, uh, Morocco today, its hopes for the continent, and what the, what the issue of uh, uh, Western Sahara, what can be done about it, is uh, Morocco's ambassador to South Africa, His Excellency Ambassador Youssef Amrani. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the program. I'm very happy to be here and to exchange with you. Mm. Of course, my mission here, my main mission is to build up a strong partnership with South Africa. Uh, we are two major countries in Africa, mm. Morocco in the North and South Africa. We share the same values. We are committed to work and to engage together in building up, like yesterday, Mr. Ramaphosa said, a prosperous and uh, uh, audacious Africa that creates wealth, that creates stability. And I think in this mm. context, we share the same values, how to work together to building a more secure and more prosperous Africa. All right. About your question about uh, the, the waters, effect effectively, yes. uh, Morocco uh, in uh, Sovereign Act has, uh, has uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, is, uh, the Parliament of Morocco has adopted laws according to the international law, according to the Monte, uh, Monte, uh, Monte uh, Bay mm. uh, Convention. So Morocco is in its right, like Spain did uh, mm. uh, 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 some years ago. Uh, of course, we know that sometimes it is very difficult and technical work. work. Sometimes there is some overlap, and the All Spanish right. foreign minister was in about three days ago, and we, uh, we assured them that, of course, it is like they did. We did the same thing, right. but if there is any overlapping, we will continue All right. to dialogue. So there's as there's two layers to this. So there's yes. the overlap between yes. Spain and uh, Morocco. Morocco. So, yes. but then the other layer is that it's in front of Western Sahara, and yeah. that's still a disputed territory. Exactly. Could that not be seen as being provocative? No, no, because today there is a, a process of uh, political negotiation within the UN. There are parameters and are known. Today there is a political settlement within the Security Council, and today there is a momentum that the parties are working towards mm. a political solution which provides for the following parameters mm. first the pragmatism then the realism and then the political solution that must be agreed and durable morocco of course mm. is committed it's working with the uh, secretary general of the un with the security council and in this connection mm. we have presented an autonomy plan that can be a solution. This autonomy plan that we have presented has been considered by the Security Council as a serial mm. and credible and likely to be uh, uh, right. implemented. What, what will that territory look like with this plan that you have? Plan how it's mm. a, it is integrated into Morocco because, listen, my friend, mm. the most important today is to, to build up uh, strong states, democratic states, because there is no room for fragile state. And you see now what it mm. is happening in the region, in Libya, for so, example. So what will happen to Saharawi? Saharawi will be integrated. It, it, it into is Morocco? It, no, in fact, the Sahara is mm. a part of the Moroccan territory. It is creation of our, of course, from Moroccan point of view, of our integrity, territorial mm. integrity, of our independence, of our unity. Of course, there was a dispute with the movement, mm. and we know who is this movement, but within the because today the, the process, the momentum in the Security Council is for a political solution that can bring stability and in, mm. in, in our region. All right, so one of the reasons that you left the African Union yes, uh, was over uh, Western Sahara and Saharawi. Um, I'm just wondering, 2017, you had a change of heart. Yes, what sir. brought you back into the AU? Well, Morocco left the African o mm. AU at that time, and I was in that meeting. Mm. I was a small secretary for uh, young. So at that time, because the charter was vol violated, but Morocco never left Africa. Mm. Morocco is an African country, not only by geography, 
by human uh, development, by economic ties, by spiritual ties also. Mm -hmm. It's important. Islam has been, uh, in all the West Africa, it was a, a link between Morocco and the rest of the African countries. So Morocco never left Africa. Today we have joined, mm -hmm. we have joined because a lot of partners have taught us to join the African Union and we have an added value to bring, mm. to, to, to build up uh, a strong African Union with stability, with, yeah. uh, with, with ambition. And today, Morocco and South Africa s share the same ambition. Mm -hmm. And Ramaphosa have said that yesterday, that and uh, South Africa is yeah. cha chairing the African Union, that we can work together. But oh. the most important, if I may say so, is today for Africa, how to create jobs how to promote economic mm. development because we need to respond to the expectations of our young generation we need stability mm. we need peaceful settlement of conflicts but we need to work as many countries mm. are doing to respond to face the challenges of terrorism of uh, of, of uh, malnutrition of economic development mm. this is the priority for, for us in the african right. union so 1961 king hassan was quite forward thinking when he said he gathered uh, uh, nations to talk about building and decolonizing the continent yes. it must be a challenge for you that uh, many years later that when you were being the vote to bring you back into the african union was being taken that a number of countries, particularly in Southern Africa, voted not to readmit you. No, uh, uh, at the contrary, yeah. the majority to do today, mm. the, Morocco is a member of the African Union. The majority of but, the African. But there were Morocco. some that didn't, and I'm just wondering about rebuilding those relationships. Uh, we need to build, build bridges. Mm. Maybe we need to explain more our narrative. Maybe our history, because Morocco mm. also was colonized. Mm. You know how. President Mandela, for example, he was in Morocco for a long time. Yeah. He has been supported. And you, uh, you, you see his, what he said about Morocco, that Morocco was a leader in helping all the African movement uh, liberation in Africa. So Morocco ca cannot be today uh, called to colonize. Morocco itself was colonized yeah. by three, by Spain, by France, and by international zone in Tangier. So Morocco was decolonized also by steps. So today, yes, there is a problem of uh, territorial integrity. We must dialogue, we must speak to each other, mm. we must convince, you must listen to us, because today there is no room for fragile states, you know. States must be strong, mm. must be, and you know, it's not, secessionism yeah. is not an issue, it's not a solution. All right, so uh, the speaking about solutions, uh, North Africa is fairly complex, and one of the issues that you have is regional integration, and yes, there doesn't sir. seem to be much of that in that part of the world. Why is that and what can be done to see uh, an integration that we have seen in West Africa, that we've seen in SADAC and East Africa as well? I completely share your view. Mm. I think uh, we failed in building up a regional integration scheme in the Maghreb. I mm. will tell you the reasons briefly. Mm. I value the e example of ECOWAS. Mm. I value the e example of SADAC. Today we have no more choice because the five countries of the Maghreb, you know, they are facing the same challenges, terrorism economic so today the maghrib is necessary listen look at this case of libya if the maghrib was united we should not have this crisis in libya so we need to work together we need to econ ec internet our networks energy and so on but what we need in fact are three elements we need a vision we need we need a commitment and we need a leadership and thanks to thanks god morocco the mm. king has this leadership is moving towards because we have no more choice then work together, plan together, sit together. Today mm. we are losing 2% of our GNP because we, di we didn't yeah. make our general integration. And also our partners in Europe and Africa want us to be united. So th I think there is a message that has been sent from, from Morocco to build up coherent uh, mm. uh, uh, integration scheme which is ba based on shared values, on democracy, on human rights, and shared prosperity mm. and this is very important so south africa is going to be chairing the au this yes. year what would you like uh, president ramaphosa to do in terms of leading uh, the continent well i think president ramaphosa have uh, and, and we share this view he said clearly that we need to create wealth in africa mm. prosperity and this is audacious so we have to think and to to have the appropriate tools we need 
to promote the investment. We need to promote trade because trade is very important, mm -hmm. and that's why we have this project. And he said that this is these are its main priorities. And Minister Pando also, I think, mm -hmm. uh, said something very two important issues. The one is the role of women, women in the development in Africa. So that's what we are doing in Morocco. And the second thing, I think maybe I don't know if you see it very well. Mm -hmm. I, I said that said that uh, 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 three weeks ago, the terrorist threat is touching the SADC and the region. You must be very careful because we live this in our region. Mm. Today, nobody is immune. We have to be very careful and to strive. And uh, in this connection, Morocco can, be, can bring a contribution because at the end of the day, what is important is how to deconstruct the jihadist narrative. We don't have to wait because people, they waited a long time. Look today what's happened in the Sahel. Right. Nobody because Boko Haram was going to be a, a leader in the region as far as promoting hate, hate and uh, extremism. So this is the, the, what Morocco can bring as tr through the training of imams. It's important. When you have a Muslim community, you have to, and thanks God in South Africa, uh, uh, your Muslim community is very integrated. It's working very well, but you never know. One has to be very careful when it comes to the propagation of this. No and Foreign Minister Pando yesterday pointed out, I don't know, it was maybe not well received, not well heard, but she put the, uh, the point on the real issue because uh, this is something that can grow. Look at Syria, what happens. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I think uh, we're probably going to need to have uh, more conversations. I'm, I'm at your disposal. So I'm open okay. for dialogue because dialogues help us to move forward. Your Excellency, pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. I was right. happy to talk to you. That was uh, Morocco's ambassador to uh, South Africa speaking to us about uh, the country at this stage and the contribution that it hopes to make on the continent, uh, specifically in the year ahead. All right. Now, a little earlier, we spoke to Morocco's ambassador to South Africa, Youssef Amrani, and he talked to us about the country's reintegration into the African Union and what he saw as a path to a final political solution for the disputed territory Western Sahara. Well, to give us a bit more analysis on this North African state and region, in fact, I'm now joined in studio by Africa analyst Gideon Chitanga. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, let's talk about North Africa generally. I mean, it, it seems to be one of these regions where conflict still uh, continues unabated. And I spoke to the ambassador, and they just don't seem to have, uh, particularly in this Maghreb, uh, uh, an integrated, uh, an integration uh, in their region. Why is that, and what needs to happen? I think you, you summarized it mm. so well. I, the Northern African region is not progressive well in terms of our regional integration. So if you look at the main countries, I, Libya, I, Morocco, mm. Algeria, Tunisia, I, you take Egypt, you take uh, Mauritania. Morocco is the most stable. Uh, Tunisia and Algeria, I, they are going through a political transition mm. and uh, they are fairly I, unstable. I think Egypt now is a bit stable, but it has had its own issues. Libya is uh, the major, major issue, and there's an intersectionality of um, local domestic interests, in the regional interests, and, um, and global interests. So this is a region which is um, very unstable. I think that um, the regional integration is historically failed because primarily the major actors have been inside looking but also uh, there are there's a lot of instability there's uh, there are cases of um, terrorism that is linked to uh, mm. a sense of the international understanding of terrorism and uh, the, 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 the generation of leaders who uh, formed the, the, um, the Arab Maghreb Union uh, have not been able to move beyond intra-rivalry to come together and work mm. together. But having said that, there the, the, the are opportunities, and I think that there is an interest from an emerging generation, including of the citizens of northern African countries, to focus on what keeps them together mm. more than what divides them. And I think these are economic interests and are settling issues like Libya, yeah. which would allow the region to move forward. How much influence do the former colonial powers still have uh, in the region? Because they, they, I mean, I think of Morocco in itself and uh, three former colonial powers <laughs> involved just in that region alone. 
Yeah, the, 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 the structural effect of uh, the histories of uh, colonial domination, they affect uh, how we think and uh, look at ourselves. Mm. But also it is important to, to, to note that uh, these countries were, uh, they are among us, uh, the earliest countries to get their independence and freedom mm. compared to Southern Africa, for example. Uh, and I think that uh, we should not undermine their agents. I just think that uh, uh, the indirect influence of the major metropolitan mm. colonial powers has been there, but it's not the major issue. I think the issue is for these countries to redefine themselves and um, I think recently to yeah. look into the global <coughs> continental interest and to be part of the African continental drive for integration so that they can channel their energy, political mm. energy, political will, and their socio-economic and human resources into rising up continentally with the rest of the continent, including also dealing with issues of uh, political and security, which are major challenges in the region. Well, let's talk a little bit about that uh, integrating with the rest of the continent. Because there are some people who felt that, you know, this sub-Saharan African story and this North African story, they never quite felt they're part of the rest of the continent and maybe perhaps felt more at home in the, in the Arab world. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a dominant perception, it's a dominant paradigm, uh, but obviously uh, uh, much of all of North African mm. countries now are part of the African Union. Mm. E, it is also important to, to mention that um, e, Morocco, e, Egypt, and other players are founding countries of the African Union. E, Morocco left because of its uh, domestic issues and the sense of injustice from the organization of uh, African unity, but it has come back. So I think there is an interest from these countries to be part of the African continent. E, this interest has not been uh, fully utilized, I guess, by both, e, in the case of Southern Africa, e, so we can say both Southern Africa in the sense of the Sadak region and um, Northern African countries, mm. e, including West African countries. The, the, the relationships and the interactions have not been deliberate and strategic, e, e, more focused and more driven. And I think that... Um, each country needs to focus on that. We need to see more interaction, not only at political level, but at business level. And uh, mm -hmm. I know for sure that uh, Morocco has been uh, on an overdrive to invest uh, mostly in much of uh, uh, West Africa. It's a uh, financial sector, it's mm -hmm. uh, big companies. It's been involved in uh, uh, connecting uh, West Africa to North Africa and creating a channel for the transmission of gas to, to the West. So if yeah. this is extended and by all other countries to say, let's focus on the economic interests and improve the livelihoods of our people. Let's solve the political and the security issues that affect us, including those issues that divide us, while we converge yeah. on key beneficial right. we, issues. We, we, we run out of time, but can, is the uh, Western Sahara Saharawi question solvable? Yeah, I think it's solvable. I, I think that uh, for me, uh, secession, uh, which is, uh, is proposed as a solution by other actors, mm. can be a problem. If you look at uh, South Sudan, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, uh, the, the war, which was initially a domestic conflict, resulted in, in a split after a referendum. But that referendum did not solve the Southern the South Sudan issue. The Sahara Republic is a, is a small strip. It might have a strategic a value, but I think that the major solution is more good governance, more inclusive governance, instead of continuously breaking African states and uh, fragmenting them. So a more collaborative, pluralist, inclusive approach it can eventually deal with uh, this situation in a permanent way, but also providing for the economic needs of the people because I think that's a major, major agent need uh, for both the mainland Morocco but also the Sahrawi. And I think these are issues that are being addressed. All right. Good day, Chitango. We're going to have to leave it there. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. But thanks very much, as always, for your insights uh, on the issues on the continent. I'm sure we'll pick another country and another issue in the near future. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, straight after that, uh, the world of sport.